in this question here, A part B of 12 November 2014, paper 4.3. We are asked to factorize the expression x squared plus 3x minus 10. <coughs> now, in order to factorize this expression, what we must do is we must the two brackets. This is entitled quadratic factorization, where it's into two brackets. This is a very simple one. There's just a one in front of the x squared, so you can straight away put it into these two brackets without much trouble. X times x, which is x squared. Now we have two numbers that are going to go in these two positions, and those two numbers must have a product of minus 10 and a sum of positive 3. Okay. So you can think of all the ways of getting. 10 as a product. So we have 10 times 1 and we have 5 times 2. Which one of these products will leave us with 3 when we subtract two numbers because they have different signs. One is a positive number, one is a negative number. So you have to have <coughs> different signs for you to have a negative product. So which two which, which two of these will leave us with 3? It's going to be 5 and 2. It's a positive sum of 3, so it must be a positive 5. And it must be a um, negative 2. So we're left with x plus 5 multiplied by x minus 2 in the other one. So there we've done part B, part 1. That's not a problem. Now, B, part 2, we have a quadratic equation which is sketched in this diagram. And we are asked to find the values of A, B, and C. Now, A, B, and C are the places where the line or the curve passes through the x-axis and the y-axis. So we have the equation of the line, which is y equals x squared plus 3x minus 10. Now, what you should realize is, on the y-axis, x is equal to 0. That is the equation of the y-axis, x is equal to 0. Everywhere in that y-axis, the value of x is 0. As you can see from this point here, they've even given you a clue. They put the point is 0, so that's where x is 0. So to find where this curve passes through y-axis, you can substitute x equals 0 into this equation. So it's 1 equals 0 squared plus 3 times 0 minus 10, which gives you negative 10. So we know that the value of c must be negative Okay, that's the y-intercept, you can see from here. And we also know that on the x-axis, y is equal to 0. Okay, y equals 0 is a horizontal line. So y, y equals any constant is a horizontal line. And y equals 0 is a line that passes along the x-axis, passes through y equals 0. So we can see that, therefore, these the coordinates of a and b, points where the x coordinates of the points are going to be given when y is equal to 0. So what we do is we take the equation, and instead of putting x equals 0, this time we're going to put y equals 0. So x squared plus 3x minus 10 equals 0. Now to solve this quadratic equation, you can do it in numerous ways, but the simplest ways it can be factorized is to use factorization, which we already did in part A. It's exactly the same again expression of this side of the equation as what we had factorized in part B part 1. So if we factorize this, which we've already done, so have to write down the answer that we got. We have x plus 5 and x minus 2. Now, let's move on from here. To solve this quadratic equation, we're going to use what's called the zero product property. If two or more factors equal to 0, the product of two or more factors is 0, then one or more of those factors must be 0. So either x plus 5 will be our 0, in which case x has to be minus 5. Minus 5 is a number that will cause this bracket to be zero, become 0. Or x plus 2, sorry, x minus 2. x minus 2 is equal to 0. Okay. In which case, x is going to be equal to positive. So, of course, if you look at a and b, b must be 2, and a must be 
negative 5, because A is on the negative side of the x-axis. So our A is negative 5, and our B is 2. Okay, that's A part 2, and A, a part two. Oh, sorry, B part 2. Now, B part 3 says write down the equation of the line of symmetry of this graph. Our lines of symmetry can be found in multiple ways. However, as we already have um, done most of the work in terms of finding where it crosses the x-axis, in that case, it's easiest for us to do as follows, which is the line of symmetry will always cut through the vertex of a quadratic curve. Rather, it will always cut through the lowest point or the highest point. In this case, it's the lowest point. That's so the line of symmetry will pass through. It will be vertical. It will pass through the lowest point or the highest point of the curve. Okay, this is a smiley face curve because x squared is a positive coefficient, and therefore it's going to pass through the lowest point. Now, if it's symmetrical, if this curve is symmetrical, then the distance between um, these points here, the distance between minus 5 and 0, could be this, sorry, minus 5 and the line of symmetry, sorry, okay, the distance between minus 5 and the line of symmetry must be the same distance as between this two and the line of symmetry. Those two distances must be the same. Okay, so that means that the point here, where it passes the, the midpoint, is the minus five and two. Okay, so to find the midpoint, it would be minus five plus two divided by two, which is going to give you minus three over two. So that's going to give you minus one point five. So the equation of the line of symmetry, the equation of this line, which is vertical and passing through minus 1.5, is x equal minus 1.5. That's the equation of the line. So that's the equation of the line of symmetry. x equals minus 1.5. Vertical line passing through negative 1.5 on the x-axis. Okay, so that concludes question 8, part B.